I've been asked to, to do a video on how planning theory applies to development economics and rapid growth of economies. So I'm going to do a couple of these. Um, I'm, since I'm following on from the tutorials I was doing on Vector Pascal, I'm going to use short snippets of code written in that to show how planning calculations for growth economics can be done. Um, I'm looking at the von Neumann model rather than the Feldman model initially. And it is a matrix-based model and the use of matrices to represent the economy was popularized by von Neumann who was a, an outstanding and famous mathematician. He had, before working on economic growth, provided the mathematical foundations of quantum theory. He, um, his mathematical treatment, though not necessarily his notation, is still widely used. Then later in the 1940s he invented what's known as the von Neumann model of computer, which is still the basic model of computer that we use at the moment with a random access store from which both data and instructions can be fetched. That was his idea. Now, what's the connection between these things? In his work on quantum theory, he showed that quantum operators can be represented by matrices and, and specifically by unitary rotation matrices. That is to say, between input and output, they rotate a state vector in, in the abstract vector space of Hilbert space whilst preserving it its length. Now this reflects a deep property of mechanics that it's conservative. It's conserving length of the vector in this case. And he realized that if we look at the economy as a matrix operator, then it's a non-conservative operator. It allows growth. And the von Neumann treatment of the economy in terms of matrix operations had a very big impact on Marxian economics, roughly from the 50s to the 80s. We see it in later publications by Langer and Marishima, and it underlies much of the subsequent formalization of Marxist value theory. And I'm going to look at it insofar as it relates to growth theory, not as it relates to value theory. Now, remember when he was writing 1930s, it was the peak point of Soviet planned economic growth. And although his model incorporates prices and the prices correspond to Marxian prices of production, his model should really be seen as a model for a planned growing economy, perhaps a state capitalist economy, but still a planned economy. And if you're interested in more details of it, the, the paper by Kurtz and Salvadori that I show here is worth reading. It centers around something called the A matrix, which has become a key concept in modern Marxist economics. And the A matrix describes the technical conditions of production in a concise form. And if you want a background to it, you could have a look at uh, uh, Mikio Morishima's book. Here's an example. I've given a basically three production sector plus labor model which corresponds to the the degree of disaggregation that Marx uses in capital. Um, column one shows means of production, column two shows necessities, column three shows luxuries and column four shows the production of labor power. Now I'll go into how we interpret it but note from the beginning these are purely illustrative, not a, any actual real economy. And it's a very simple, minimal A matrix, because it only shows four production sectors, including 
the production of labour power. A real one would be much bigger. Now let's look at column one. What it's saying is that to produce one unit of means of production, I'm going to use up 0.35 units of means of production, 0.01 unit of necessities, and 0.1 unit of labor. So you go down the column and it tells you how much is going to be required to produce one unit of each of the outputs. And the row labels match the column labels. So that row one means means of production, row two necessities, row three luxury, etc. Now, if we look at the necessities column, in classical political economy, the necessities column is food production, corn. And I've shown it here as only requiring 0 0.3 of a person. That's because that's the sort of percentage of the workforce that's required to grow crops in a developed mechanised capitalist economy. Now, in the von Neumann model, labour is produced by the use values necessary for the reproduction of the labourer. And this is essentially the same concept as in Marx. And here I'm showing that 0 0.13 units of means of production. Now the obvious sort of means of production that enters into the reproduction of labour power would be fuel, heating fuel. Um, 0 0.5 unit of necessities, a small quantity of luxuries and 0 0.3 of labour since it should in principle also include the time for sleep and training. And I'm assuming that some luxuries are consumed by workers and in a second video, if I do get round to that, I will show how this changes in the course of socialist growth. And what's it useful for? Well, we can use the A matrix to determine what inputs would be required to produce a given output. And you can express this as a simple matrix equation. The inputs are the A matrix times the outputs you want. Here, as, as I said, is a little snippet of code demonstrating this. First, I set the, all the outputs to one, saying I want one unit of every output. I can, with the matrix multiplication, I compute the number of inputs we require. We then print out the matrix. We print out the outputs. We print out the inputs used, and then we compute the lengths of the input and output vectors. I gave an example of computing lengths of vectors in the last talk, but this is just to show that we do actually get growth. So um, here's the, the matrix again. This is the output, one of each, and these are the inputs that will be required to produce it. And see how the, the vector lengths have increased. The length of the output vector is two. Well, that's a, a length in four dimensional space. Uh, the, the, the components are obviously four, take the square root, you get two. And the input length is less than that. So that's a precondition for growth. The economy uses less means of production and labor than it produces. Now, let's consider growth, onwards and upwards. Von Neumann established that the maximum rate of growth in the economy occurs when the economy produces its outputs in the same ratio as the inputs it uses. You get the same concept occurring in Sraffa, in his book Production of Commodities by Means of Commodities. But it's von Neumann who invents it. Now, how does he come to this? It's about eigenvectors. What von Neumann was relying on here was something that he was intimately familiar with in his mathematical quantum theory. But how does this maths of quantum theory relate to the then ongoing Soviet industrialization? Well, we first have to understand what an eigenvector is. 
an eigenvector from matrix A is a vector which when you multiply it by the matrix doesn't change its direction in the multidimensional space it's embedded but just changes its scale and the change in scale of the eigenvector is called the eigenvalue. Uh, in quantum physics the eigenvectors of a von Neumann observable form an orthonormal basis that's a right angled basis in Hilbert space and that's the mathematical space which he analyzes quantum state to exist in and each possible outcome of these measures corresponds to one of the eigenvectors. Now scaling which occurs with the economic case is what requires the possibility of growth and how some economies, planned ones, are capable of very rapid balanced growth because at the time he was writing that rapid growth was occurring in the USSR. Here is a simple array algorithm which will extract the maximum growth rate from the A matrix. We want, remember what we, we want to achieve. We want to find a vector with the proportions in it such the proportions of the input are the same as the proportions of the output. Well, we do the same as we did before which is find out what we would require to produce one of everything, which is the first two steps. We then iterate taking the average of the input and output vectors, which is what this line is doing. To make sure that the computation doesn't explode or implode, we normalize this by taking the, the length of the output vector, dividing the outputs by that, that ensures that what we have is a vector of length one each at each stage and then we iterate again. If we repeat that we find, oops go back, if we repeat that we find that that's the the stable solution. Uh, it hasn't totally converged after 20 iterations but it's very close to converging and it's saying that the growth rate will be 1.867 roughly and there you see the outputs that would be that would be produced and these are the inputs necessary to produce them we could at a later point show how you can look at the maximum rate of surplus value or the maximum amount of leisure time the working class could have by using the same matrix now that's explicitly coding it up. If you've got MATLAB available to you, you can just write it down as one statement and you extract the eigenvalues from the A matrix like that. That's enough for now. Um, there are weaknesses of the von Neumann approach, particularly its treatment of fixed capital of long lasting means of production. And I'll go into this in another video where I show how you can take the A matrix, take the mean depreciation time of capital or means of production, and then use Kantorovich linear programming to solve for the optimal growth path. But that's going to involve me in doing a fair bit of calculations, writing snippets of code, etc. So give me some time.